ladies and gentlemen my fellow learning partners students this is in particular going to be a video about the idea of performance measurement and performance management because when it comes to the questions i get asked one of the most common questions about writing for sec is advanced performance management or p5 paper is how do i get started i don't know how to get started with a certain type of question and that is exactly what i wanted to try and give some clarity on if you are a student who is you know kind of training yourself and wanting to take the apm or p5 paper uh, in in some future date so the most common skill test in advanced performance management is something that i can illustrate to you this is a past paper question assess the problems soup may encounter in selecting and interpreting performance measures when applying the balance scorecard to its performance management system so we continuously see this this phrase or these phrases of performance measures or performance measurement and performance management embedded within questions so this is a case of the balance scorecard application but the impact or implication to performance measurement and performance management advise the ceo on the implications for performance management at godel of analyzing variances into planning and operational elements so here we have a variance analysis implication that too at a very high level breaking it down into planning and operational aspects to it or rather planning and control aspects to it but again the implication is on performance management evaluate the existing performance management system at apx by applying the building block model now we have a building block model application but again it's about the implication to performance management system advise the ceo on how the use of the balance scorecard would improve the performance management system of soup again we have a clear evidence to see that the apm examiner is obsessed by this idea of performance management i mean i don't really need to go the entire distance right discuss the merits of league tables in performance management and address the ceo's concerns over their use in managing the performance of excellence police forces performance measurement performance management is something that as i said the apm examiner is obsessed with and also is implied in the name of the subject it's advanced performance management so as a p5 student the the it's it's almost as if your foundation is built on this idea of knowing to what extent do you know are you familiar with and performance management i'll take you one step further in more recent papers since especially the syllabus updates and and the kind of updates to the examination framework the examination design itself we see these kind of questions assess the difficulties of performance measurement and performance management in complex business structures such as callisto especially in respect of the performance of their employees and strategic partners now look at that first sentence assess the difficulties of performance measurement and performance management isn't that wonderful earlier we used to have this kind of separated but now we 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 see the examiner directly asking you the kind of things that relate to performance measurement and management both i'll go one step further look at this this is a more recent one explain to the ceo what changes basil would need to make to its performance measurement and performance management systems if it were to adopt a value based management approach performance measurement and performance management these two are the most these two are the foundational skills that the apm exam or the p5 examiner is obsessed which is not something i mean negatively okay which is something very positive because i feel like today this is critical for anyone for anyone who's managing businesses for anyone who's running things knowing the idea of measuring and managing performance is 
critical in effectively running or managing operations. So let's try and understand them. First of all, let's try and figure out what performance measurement is. This is something that is implied in the phrase itself. It stems from the idea that what gets measured gets done. So if you don't measure something, whatever activity that you're doing, it's very unlikely it, it could get done, but you don't know whether it's getting done well, whether what you're doing is bad, whether what, you're, what you've done is sufficient, whether what you've done is way too much. None of this would be provided in terms of an intelligent perspective if you don't measure what you do. It is not merely enough to make plans and implement them. The results of the plans must be measured and compared against stated objectives to assess the firm's performance. So you have to measure the results. You have to compare them against your plan. So how can you compare your performance against a plan if you don't measure your performance? And you have to have measured what you did in order to understand whether you did well or whether you did bad. That is where performance measurement comes in. Action can be taken to remedy any shortfalls in performance and APM looks at what performance measures are most appropriate. So let's link this to the skill idea. For you, the critical skill is figuring out whether the performance measures used in order to measure the performance, measure what they do in any kind of situation you get in the exam, are they appropriate to that situation? Are they appropriate to that context? That's the skill we need to develop. Performance measurement is definitely an ongoing process. It's not something you do once and then give up. It has to continue, which must react quickly to the changing circumstances of the firm and of the environment. When you look at all those sample question extracts, requirement extracts I showed to you, if you go back and read those questions, you'll realize that this is what is going on. Business circumstances are changing. When COVID-19 hit, circumstances change. When a bank refuses a loan, circumstances change. When customers are not buying from you anymore, circumstances are changing. When your company is growing, when your company has become a large enterprise from a small enterprise of 30 people. Now it's employing 120 people. Circumstances have changed. When circumstances are changing, you have to update your performance measurement or performance measures used. When that is not done, problems, problems, problems. A change in organizational structure, culture or strategy. Organizational structure culture or strategy may result in a requirement for changes in performance measurement techniques and methods. So again, we see this idea of the context changing, the, the, the environment of operations changing in terms of structure, culture or strategy. And therefore, you have to try and figure out a way to apply that changing circumstance to updated performance measures. And ideally, when you poorly design your performance measurement activities, these can result in wrong signals and dysfunctional behavior. Right? You, you, you get the wrong intelligence and your people do things that are not the most functional, that are not the most optimal. So dysfunctional or suboptimal decisions, actions are uh, resulted when what you measure is the inappropriate thing, the inappropriate activity, the inappropriate intelligence. So this is about performance measurement. The optimal system for performance measurement ideally will include financial performance indicators and non-financial performance indicators, which is why we have chapter 8, 9 and 10 purely dedicated to financial performance. Well, 10 in a different context of not for profits, but chapter 11, you know that it's purely based and it's it's rather a sizable chapter, sizable, you know, portion of your syllabus, which is the non-financial performance indicator aspect to things. Because as a company, when you're measuring performance, 
Nowadays, in the modern day organization, you're not only supposed to measure financial performance, you are also supposed to measure. And on that note, let's take a look at performance management. Now, performance management is essentially an idea that I think is associated with general day to day life because doing anything means performance, doing means performance and doing anything in, in, a, in a way that is productive, that is efficient, that is optimal, that is good involves performance management. Performance management is basically as far as the definition is concerned from your text, you would have read it any activity that is designed to improve the organization's performance and ensure that its goals are met. I'll repeat that performance management is anything, any activity that is designed to improve the organization's performance and ensure that the objectives, that the goals are met. This is why we call this subject advanced performance management. The term performance management is mentioned almost 200 times in your study text and it's mentioned at least at the very least five to ten times in your paper. So having a very thorough understanding of performance management is critical. The APM exam focuses on performance management systems because you can't really how can you manage if you're not organized. Right? A critical part of management is organized, being organized itself. So if you're organized, it means there's a system around things. So what we focus or what the APM examination focuses on is performance management systems within the organization by which the performance is measured, controlled and improved. So essentially within the scope of a system, a systemic approach to managing performance, you get to measure you get to control and you get to improve performance of the company. And this is what a performance management system really involves. APM looks more at what performance management systems are needed. So performance measurement alone is where APM looks at the appropriateness of performance measures. Performance management, APM looks at what do you need? What are the performance management systems that you must, that you need to have put in place within your company? Performance management techniques are used to put the most appropriate strategies in place in order to achieve the organization's mission, mission and objective. See, we continuously see this idea getting repeated. The idea that what you do, the management of what you do has to ultimately take you to your mission it has to take you to your objectives. You should have achieved your goal. That, that link of what you do and achieving your goals, that connectivity is what is created through performance management systems. And performance management fundamentally aims to direct and support the performance of all employees and departments so that the organization's goals are achieved. So here the focus is that you can't achieve your goals, you can't achieve your objectives if only one person in the company is focused on it. If you're the owner, you're a startup, you have 10 people, but you're the only person who knows what the objectives are, who knows that you want to manage it, that doesn't work like that. A good performance management system will basically be designed in a way that it directs and supports and informs and drives and motivates all the people everyone in the company to get to the objective of the organization. Performance management can improve as a result of linkages between people, operations, strategy and technology. In fact, when I read these two sentences, right, the idea of performance management fundamentally associating everyone in the company and the idea that the system can create links between people, operations, strategy and technology. I have excellent experience with how when it's not done well, there can be dysfunctional elements to operations within a company because from my exam, my, my experience in one of my corporate roles as a, as a, 
planning specialist i was associated to multiple teams including marketing business intelligence and um, and and the group cxo level you know the the steering aspect to things and when you put all of these together ultimately the objective of whatever discussion is happening is you're trying to manage your performance so that you know you'll get you'll basically improve your top line but the performance management systems in place the system right the 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 communicating links created what we measure right what exactly the performance measures the kpis that are measured the information systems that we had in place those were not the most uh, coordinated right those were not the best fit there were there were gaps in in every sense of the word you know there were there were people who didn't know where we wanted to get to there were systems across multiple teams that were incompatible with each other and when you have those kinds of roadblocks what happens is the performance management system doesn't work and therefore performance doesn't improve and as a result objectives aren't achieved and this is what happens when performance management systems are really not designed in a very effective manner which is why it has to cater to everybody everybody should understand it everybody sh should be kind of hooked into it and it should create links between the people the operation strategy and technology information integrity is critical to effective performance management so the the whole idea of performance management is that the better the intelligence you have on what is going on the better you know about what's going on in the company the more accurate the information you have about what's going on the better your decisions are the better your performance becomes so information integrity is critical and that is why our p5 uh, syllabus focuses heavily on um, management information systems because your information system in place has to be one that provides you information that is accurate that is with integrity that is correct that is reliable that is dependable that is relevant that is timely when you get that kind of information you can make good decisions bad information bad decisions good information good decisions which is why we say that information integrity is critical and on that note what exactly does performance measurement or how exactly does performance measurement and performance management differ but saying that they are different that they are fundamentally different would be a little bit of a you know uh, overstretching of an argument because it's it's not really very different you know it's it's pieces of one puzzle performance management systems should be linked well to performance measures at all levels of corporate hierarchy so ideally what happens is you have to measure performance you say what gets measured right you and you you try and measure performance you know so you know what happens and then when you know your performance when you measured it what gets measured gets done right you can manage performance so measure performance and then once you measure them since you know what's going on you can manage it you can plan you can control you can improve you can manage your performance gets done so what gets measured gets done this is how ultimately you try and develop a performance management system and clearly a performance management system is the combination the culmination of the whole thing where you have an organized systemic standardized framework within your company in place that effectively measures what's going on and then that intelligence is fed forward to manage what's going on measure performance and manage performance what gets measured gets done and the combination is what you call a performance management 
system. So this is ideally the relationship between performance measurement and performance management. So with that clarity, I think now it's the time to try and understand what the examiner's expectations are around these two ideas. See, in relation to performance measurement, the examiner wants to understand if the current performance measures are appropriate. So if you get that chance, evaluate whether the KPIs are the right ones. And if, they, if you feel that they are inappropriate, do comment about it, do evaluate it, do evaluate the situation right. And maybe if the examiner has asked you, maybe you'll get to recommend the correct or the more appropriate performance measures. And the other aspect to things is if the business circumstances have changed, can you recommend updates to performance measures? Basically coming up with new KPIs given the situation is changing. So the focus here that, that I always feel like students get disconnected to is that situation. What has changed? When you understand the change in the business circumstance, right? The environment, it could be macro changes. It could be industrial changes. It could be internal changes. It could be a merger. It could be a joint venture. Depending on what is going on, the new KPIs you will come up with will, will really cater to that situation. So these are the two key aspects in common, the examiner's expectations with respect to performance measurement are. When it comes to performance management, this is a very, very big play, right? This is, this is basically our subject. The examiner expects to see if the performance management system leads the organization to achieve its goals. So if you kind of look at that system and if you feel that it doesn't take the organization to where it has to be, we have a problem. What are the weaknesses of the performance management system in place? So you get to really dive deep into the overall system and see what exactly the weaknesses are when it comes to the system that they have in place to manage their performance. Is the performance management system effective? So I, I do realize that this is related to that first point about whether the system leads the organization to achieve its goals. But what I'm trying to mean by kind of repeating the same idea is that you should be able to look at the system in detail. You should be able to look at the different cogs and components of the performance management system because it's, it's so wide, right? It relates to all departments. It relates to all the people. It relates to all the functions. It relates to all the levels. So as APM students, we should be able to in detail really identify where exactly the system can be more effective. And this is something that the examiner has tested us. Does the performance management system cover all aspects, which I just referred to that that evaluation, that identification is something that the examiner expects the P5 student to have as a skill. And if the business circumstances have changed, what changes would you recommend to the performance management system? This is something that is commonly tested about the P5 students ability to really just look at that system and uh, recommend updates, recommend changes, um, recommend any any uh, contextual updates to the overall performance management system. So these are the key examiner expectations with respect to performance measurement and performance management. The whole point of this exercise was to give you that much needed clarity and it will not really just help you to, you know, kind of look at this video and then forget about it. No, you will have to kind of associate yourself with situations like these that you see. Uh, now, with that understanding, try and read these requirements again. Assess the difficulties of performance measurement and performance management. So whatever this Callisto situation is, whatever that circumstance, that environment Callisto is currently at and going through, there apparently are difficulties with respect to measuring performance and managing performance. Can you assess them? Right. Or are they really difficult? If you think they're not, 
you should say that but you should justify it you can't just say they're not difficult even if you were to disagree outright with that statement you should give practical viable and sort of realistic justifications to why you're saying it even the second one explain to the ceo what changes Brazil would need to make to its performance measurement and performance management systems like i said what are the changes you will uh, you will apply to the performance measurement and the performance management system right so i feel like or my hope at least is that compared to the moment that you started watching the video and to now you can deal with these kind of questions in a much better way with with a much clearer idea of what exactly the examiner wants from you what exactly is the examiner expecting you to present so on that note i think there's a decent wrap on the the clarity of performance measurement and its role within the performance management system of an organization this is very important this is very essential when it comes to dealing with the acca p5 exam um so i wish you all the luck in the world i wish you all the very best i hope you found this useful i hope you'll put it to good use i know it can be and uh, on that note um i'll probably see you again thank you for tuning in keep smiling keep learning azb here signing out